on and announce the truth. The teacher is teaching the golden rule. American history is practical, man. For schoolboy Darren Van Horn, life is unlike that of most professional boxing champions. When he's not boxing full-time, he attends the University of Kentucky in Lexington. School days are spent with his girlfriend, Ann, or working on the day's homework. His life is like any other college junior. Well, almost. I'm just your average 20-year-old, you know. I like to do things that 20-year-olds like to do. Um, I like to go mess around, get in trouble, you know, trouble. Just, you know, a regular 20-year-old. And to help him get out of trouble is his nine-and-a-half-foot Burmese python. He's a very large snake, and he's my buddy. You know, I like to, I like to play with him, but I mean, I don't throw something and he doesn't go fetch it, and he doesn't bring it back, and we don't sit down and, you know, talk or anything. One of the people he does talk to is his father, GL. And though GL was responsible for introducing Darren to boxing, their relationship is better kept separate from the sport. Well, our relationship is cut and dry. It's easy. What I mean by that is, it's easy to define. When he trains me, we don't get along. When he doesn't train me, we do. It's that simple. But whomever has trained him has been successful. He was undefeated in 38 fights and the number one contender for the crown when he took on Robert Hines for the IBF title in February. He dominated the fight to win the unanimous decision and the title. But for Van Horn, boxing has been both a vocation and advocation, work and play. I wouldn't want to have a nine to five job because at the end of the year, I'm gonna know how much I'm gonna make. But what I'm doing now is I don't know if I'm gonna be broke, or I'm gonna be a millionaire at the end of this year. It's just kind of like, Waking up and not knowing what's going to happen. Gianfranco Rossi is from Italy, a country rich in boxing tradition, and they've never had a junior middleweight win the title here in the United States. And don't you just know that Mr. Rossi would love to be the first? Italy has a proud boxing history, producing no fewer than five men who have held the junior middleweight title. And Perugia, land of fine chocolates, produced the most recent former WBC champion, Gianfranco Rossi. It was October of 87 when Rossi entered the ring, a huge underdog against title holder Lupe Aquino. But after 12 give and take rounds, it was the Italian who emerged the winner and new WBC champion. In his first defense against former champion Dwayne Thomas, the supposedly light hitting Rossi turned Tiger as he crushed the American with his barrage in round seven. But it was a different Rossi who next faced Donald Curry. Though he started well and won the first round, Rossi appeared intimidated and fought well below par. After being floored a total of five times, Rossi retired in his corner after the ninth round, his spirit broken more so than his body. Today, he gets another chance to raise himself up as he challenges for the IBF title. Both fighters are now in the ring. There is Gianfranco Rossi, the challenger. And he's going in age. Rossi, 11 years older than Van Horn, but don't be confused by that. Van Horn, only nine fewer professional fights. That's because of the early start at the age of 16. Again, we'd like to apologize for the audio problems we've had here at ringside. There's a look at Gianfranco Rossi, the challenger. He'll be 32 years old in September. You can see a relatively light hitting challenger, only 15 in his 48 
professional fight. Here are the rules for today's fight. We're fighting under the IBF rules. The scoring on the 10-point must. No three knockdown rule. Neither is the standing eight in effect. And a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Tony Perez of the United States is our referee. He gives the fighters their final instructions. And we have three scoring judges here today. Two from the United States, Lynn Carter and Frank Brunette. And one of our scoring judges is from Rossi's home country of Italy, Benedetto Montella. Darren Van Horn going through his ritual of slapping himself on the in the face, and the bell sounds, and here we go with round one. You might have seen uh, getting the instructions in the ring uh, with Darren Van Horn, Jesse Reed, a new trainer on the fight in which he won the title. A lot of people gave Hedgeman Lewis a lot of credit for raising the skills of Darren Van Horn in that fight. Oh, and a left-right combination by Rossi. that time caught totally by surprise by the left and then the big right from Gianfranco Rossi. Darren Van Horn says he likes to get hit to wake him up. He got a very early wake-up call here. As you said earlier, Van Horn, uh, Rossi is not known as a big puncher, but he put a one-two on Darren Van Horn and dropped him. And Van Horn right now trying to hang on and Rossi just in for the kill. And at 20 years old, how mature is Darren Van Horn? Can he hang on and survive the first round? Generally, when he's been hurt in the past, he's never been down before. That's the first time in his pro career. But generally in the past, he has fought back well. He'll be smart to hang on to Rossi, who's trying to load up for the big one. The irony here, Dan, is that Darren Van Horn thought coming into this fight, one of the keys to stay away from Rossi, not let him grab him. It's been a trademark of Van Horn during his, his career that whenever he's been hit, he's always responded with a big flurry. He's the kind of a guy that when he takes the shot, it kind of flips the switch, and he comes back with some meaningful blows, but he's never been hit like that before. And so far, Alex, pretty effective job of surviving. And that's all it is right now for Darren Van Horn. Came close to going down there, but did not. Watch Gianfranco Rossi fight. He likes to hold and hit. He yep. likes to grab with the left and hit with the right. Exactly right. And, and Darren Van Horn knows that. He says he's got to uh, grab that right as he's doing right there in the clinch. Survival for Darren Van Horn. Clutching and grabbing. He's always been known as a guy who's used to hit, but he's always also been known as a guy with a great chin. I was shocked. I am shocked that a light-hitting guy like Rossi was able to drop him. Yeah, right on the heels of my saying, only 15 knockouts in 48 fights. And Darren Van Horn appears to have recovered. He loads up with a big right, but overextends, and now Rossi forces him up against the ropes. Darren Van Horn in the blue trunks. Dean Franco Rossi, the challenger in the yellow. We're coming to the close of the first round, and Darren Van Horn's still here. Oh, STP oil treatment is the edge. Here's the combination that dropped him. On the top left, a left and a right in combination. Down went Van Horn, but he survived. And here we are, back in the second round. A wary look on the face of Darren Van Horn. Tries with a big right and misses. Oh, and a good left that time by Van Horn. Keep in mind, only 20 years old is young Van Horn. <laughs> The surprise of his life in the first round, Alex. Oh, and another good combination by Rossi. There you saw the awkwardness of Rossi. We pointed out, you pointed out that Jim Franco is a natural athlete. He's not a goal. Oh, he hurt him again a little bit. Had his feet going funny and off balance. And that, sure that was a left of the chest that actually knocked Van Horn off balance. Jesse Reed, his new trainer, said that they've been working almost nonstop on Darren's balance, trying to get him better leverage and better punching oh, oh, power. No, no, so far, no, that, no. that balance okay, has not good. been there for him. 
This is action in the second round from Atlantic City for the IBF junior middleweight title of Darren Van Horns in the blue trunk. And right now, Gianfranco Rossi has to think that it's well within reach. There you see Rossi tying him up and punching on the clinch. Now let's see if he, he also has a patented move, and that is punching on the uh, punching on the break. He did not do it then. A right from Van Horn has just tickled the chin of Rossi. He didn't really do any damage. Darren Van Horn told us that when they got in the clinch that he was going to try to grab one of the arms of Rossi to keep him from doing that damage in close. The right arm. He's going to try to grab the right. Obviously the one he fears most. That time it was Rossi grabbing uh, Van Horn's left. Good right in combination by Rossi. A left from Van Horn missed and Rossi moved right back inside and scored to the body. We concentrate a lot about the physical aspects of this sport, Dan. The mental aspects are very important. Darren Van Horn came into this fight with his oh, another combination. The same left, right, and the right buckled the knees of Van Horn. I was just the second the time that that wounded Van Horn. Van Horn came into this fight with his confidence sky high. We had no idea of the mental state of Gianfranco Rossi. It was a big question, but that knockdown in the first round had to set his confidence up, and Darren Van Horn has to be shaken. There's no doubt that Van Horn can take a punch. It's been the trademark of his career. And again, Rossi wants to find out how good of a punch can he take. And he's tested him so far. Another big round for Rossi. Think lame and are dumb? Die hard. A man. And there's the bell, and this is the third round. A fight where both of the first two rounds have seen Darren Van Horn wounded. In the final 15 seconds, he was stunned again, Alex, of the second round. Obviously a 10-8 first round for Rossi, a 10-9 on my scorecard in the second round, but, uh, you know, that's, that's lean and getting close to a 10-8. I mean, he totally dominated and had him a little bit hurt. But still, three points ahead after two rounds is a big, you know, that's about as fast a start as you can hope for. The left eye of Darren Van Horn is certainly red. It's difficult to tell if it's beginning to swell. Oh, and another combination. From Rossi. And Rossi just beating Van Horn to the punch. He's getting off first, putting punches together. Van Horn not slipping punches the way he did and winning the title against Times. All the skill that Darren Van Horn showed in that fight against Robert Bam Bam Hines is absolutely out the window right now. Well, it's actually Gianfranco Rossi <laughs> turning his back and walking away with a headlock. It's actually Rossi who's fighting Van Horn's fight. And again, a right lead scores. You expected this kind of from the opening bell aggression from Van Horn, not necessarily Rossi, Alex. And the thing that really surprised me is the quickness of Rossi, how much faster he is right now than Van Horn. I think that's because Van Horn is trying to load his punches up too much. He's not letting his hands go and putting punches together. He's just loading up and he's real tight. And again, Van Horn grabs. Rossi putting punches. There you see the mouthpiece of Gianfranco Rossi. He's put out a lot of punches right now. Whether he can maintain this pace is dubious. But you can't blame him for wanting to pour it on now that he's got his man in a little trouble, as he has almost from the opening bell. No, you sure can't. Darren Van Horn. Not sure whether or not he was going to re-enroll this fall at the University of Kentucky. I doubt it's going through his mind right now, but it, it certainly might after this fight. Well, there might have been a moment when he picked himself off the canvas when he thought about re-enrolling. <laughs> but he's fought back hard here. He just hasn't found the key. There you saw him pull out his left eyebrow as though he caught a little something there. There he landed a punch, but it was a slap more than a, than a good right. stick punch. And that first combination from Rossi hit the gloves of Van Horn. Didn't really do any damage. But again, Van Horn has always been susceptible to getting hit. He's taken a lot of shots in his career, and one thing Gianfranco Rossi stated before the fight was, I'm not afraid of that 39-0 record. I, talking about Rossi, have faced four world champions. He believes the better quality of opponents that he's faced would help him in this fight, Alex. Coming to the close of the third round, Again, Gianfranco Rossi. Technology store. Graphics tied up. And we're 
were started here in Atlantic City in the fourth round. This, the IBF Junior Middleweight Championship at Trump Castle, the title held by Darren Van Horn there in the blue trunk. Dean Franco Rossi, the challenger from Italy, has dominated this fight to this point. He floored Van Horn, dropped him in round number one, had him staggered in round number two, and dominated again in round three. And right now, he's, he's not landing more punches right now, but he's fighting his fight. This is where Van, uh, Rocky likes to be. Darren Van Horn knew that before the fight. He said he had to step back and get punching room, not let Rossi grab him, not get into that kind of a brawling fight. He just has not been able to gather himself since the knockdown in round one. Darren schoolboy Van Horn there loading up with the big one. Rossi, certainly Alex, has been aggressive. His corner between rounds, advising him to continue punching. Don't stop the rest. Rossi's people not wanting this to go the distance. Although both fighters apparently superbly conditioned, Alex. Swelling under the right eye of Gianfranco Rossi. Rossi is very vulnerable when he jumps in like he just did there, Dan. That's when he can be caught with counter punches. Darren Van Horn counter punched beautifully against Hines in winning the title. He has not caught him yet. But when Rossi lost his title to Curry, that's when he got caught by Donald Curry. Inside, left, and right. Single punches as he was jumping in, lunging in off balance. Both fighters trying to score inside. You see again the example of Van Horn clutching the right arm of Rossi, trying to make him a one-arm fighter when they're in the clinch. And that time on the inside, in the clinch, Darren Van Horn actually got off the two better scoring blows to the body. Very step back, tried to land a right hand. All right, Rossi again, has a good look, grabbing the right arm. Right, and you saw Rossi slip a three and land a punch, and there, score a good one-two at distance. I think Rossi would be real advised to fight a little bit better at distance. He's been, and there, again, Rossi getting off on the break of the clinch. It's Rossi who's scoring on the combination. All right, right. Fighting, fighting a smarter fight, not trying to load up with a big punch. Oh, and there's a good right from Van Horn, and that appears to have staggered Rossi. Right on the temple, and that did hurt him. He's fighting back here, but he was momentarily stunned. Inside 20 seconds in the fourth round. And for the first time, Darren Van Horn has landed a meaningful blow. Oh, and a good combination back from Rossi. This is the close of the fourth. Here's the beginning of the fifth round in Atlantic City, the IBF World Junior Middleweight Championship. An international flavor here on Wide World of Sports today with the Tour de France and now Gianfranco Rossi of, of Italy with a, a dynamite performance to date, Alex Wallow. The last round was the closest one I thought of the fight so far. Van Horn scored that one punch and a couple of good body punches. Uh, Rossi scored more punches. Uh, the question is, how do you judge it? Do you give him credit for scoring more punches? Do you give Van Horn credit for that more powerful single punch? Yeah, for the, but at least uh, as far as Darren Van Horn is concerned, for the first time in the fourth round, he did some damage to Rossi. Right. This fight is scheduled for 12. You wonder how long it could go at the pace that we saw through the first four. Rossi to me. Oh, and another good left. Van Horn walked right into it. Good stiff jab. Kept him off balance. Rossi to me at this stage, Dan, looks a little bit more tired than Darren, but he's still busier. He's forcing the pace more, even though he may be more tired. Well, you can see when Rossi moves into the camera that his mouth is hanging open. You can see the exposed mouthpiece of Gianfranco Rossi. Both fighters grabbing and clinching. Rossi's corner told him between rounds to pay attention throughout the round. And Rossi said, oh! And Darren Van Horn with a big shot, but that's a slip by Rossi that puts him over into the corner. A slip or a shot put Rossi said he's <laughs> Tony Perez, the referee, wisely just allowing the fight to continue. There's a right uppercut in the clinch, and a good counter left inside. I'd like to alert our stations down the line that at the conclusion of this round, we'll be taking a station break. 
Rossi missing badly with the right hand, but Van Horn didn't counter, didn't get his distance, didn't let his hands go, didn't put punches together. Oh, and a big right from Darren Van Horn, and you saw Rossi, his legs buckle, and now Van Horn senses he's got his man hurt. But Rossi fights back. I guess he's fighting back. <laughs> That he's hurt Rossi Van Horn. Hurt Van Horn. <laughs> Sam, this is really shocking. I mean, Darren Van Horn, the thing he had that most fe he most featured, even when he couldn't fight in terms of skill, was an iron chin. And he's been hurt by a guy who just is not considered a big puncher. And it hurt a number of times. ABC's Wide World of Sports will continue after this from our ABC station. Sam Vincent's tonight on Channel 2 Weather. Here we go with round number six for the IBF Junior Middleweight title in round number five. Van Horn's best round to date. Still a very, very close round. I thought he won it. But clearly the best round he'd had so far in the fight after being totally dominated early in that right semi-uppercut. By Rossi got through. He asked Jesse Reed this corner in between rounds who won it. Did I win it? He needs some encouragement right now. He needs some good moves. And Jesse would say you won it, but you gotta keep going and you gotta be busy. Right now, Dan, I think it's a crisis condition. I think Rossi is a little worn down. He has to get a second win. He has to be able to maintain the pace and allow him to dominate the early rounds. No, no, no. Well on the side of Darren Van certainly has to be youth, 11 years younger than Gianfranco Rossi. Is that offset by the quality of opposition that Rossi has faced? I mean, Gianfranco Rossi has been in the ring in clutch situations with people like Lupe Aquino and Lloyd Hunnigan, Donald Curry, Dwayne Thomas. Oh, and a big load up right by Van Horn. This is badly. That time Rossi did not make Van Horn pay. He had Van Horn a little bit off balance. But he didn't let his hands go. Yeah, one punch and grabbing by Rossi. The thing that got him the knockdown was combination punching. Oh, oh that good counter right by Rossi. You could see it snap the head of Darren Van Horn. A rapid punch in the clinch there by Van Horn. No warning from the, the referee. Well, that good left didn't appear to have a whole lot on it, but it definitely got in and scored on Van Horn. Well, Darren, oh, and another, that left right Van Horn, Alex, just leaving his head out there to take that beating. And the nice thing about what uh, Gianfranco is doing is, there you saw both men shake their arms a little bit. Darren raised his, and Gianfranco shook his. That means they're a little bit tired. There you saw that move uh, where Darren scratches his shoulder. We asked him what that's all about. He says, it's easy, I'm, I'm scratching an itch. There is Jesse Reed, the trainer of Darren Van Horn. You don't need me to tell you that he's concerned. And by the way, if you see Van Horn with that right hand of his clutching at his left shoulder, as Alex told me earlier, don't be confused by that. That's just a nervous tick. Not an injury. Did it again. In the first round, Van Horn was grabbing his chin. And that was because of an injury. <laughs> Well, if this fight goes the distance, we're halfway home. This is the end of round number six. Here we go in the seventh round from Atlantic City. Dan Deardorff along with Alex Wallow here this afternoon on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the IBF World Junior Middleweight Championship. And Alex, if Darren Van Horn has learned one thing this afternoon, it is how to survive after he's been hurt. For the first time in his career, hurt badly in the first round, and here he is still alive in the seventh. Still alive. I thought that uh, Rossi had a, a good round and won the last round. And he, he, on our scorecards, Dan, he's, you know, he's got a, through the first half of the fight, he's got a uh, four-point edge on my scorecard. I'm sorry, three-point edge. 
Darren Van Horn has landed some single meaningful shots, but all the good combination punching so far is being done by Gianfranco Rossi, and <laughs> there's Rossi bailing out of a clinch. Wanting to touch gloves. And Darren Van Horn saying, I'll pass. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with your gloves. <laughs> The thing that really has surprised me after what Darren said about his game plan coming in and what his trainer Jesse Reed said was he hasn't established a jab at all. Well, we're, we're watching a little World Wrestling Federation action here right now. Both of these fighters doing a little less boxing and a little more pushing and shoving and, and roughhousing. Well, that was a good right by Rossi. Right, Van Horn sort of good body punch, but Gianfranco continue to punch and putting punches together. Something Darren hasn't been able to do at all. Well, there's a good example where Van Horn didn't grab the arm of Rossi inside, and Rossi did a lot of effective punching inside. And you hear the Italian contingent. Sounds like when Gianfranco won the title in Perugia, his hometown, Rossi, Rossi. Well, Rossi making his first professional appearance in the United States. And he is fighting valiantly. This fight was listed, Dan, in some places as a 10 to 1 fight. And look at Gianfranco Rossi. The flurry put Van Horn against the rope and wisely clinching. Gianfranco won the title when he was a 6 to 1 underdog. Here he's 10 to 1 underdog in some places, as I said, in Las Vegas. He seems to fight best when he's a big underdog. Look at him muscle Van Horn back into the corner. And again, a good example of Rossi clutching and holding, and then hitting. Boy, Rossi is consistently getting under the right hand of Darren Van Horn. Oh, and a good uppercut by Rossi in the clinch, and you can see how that kind of aggravated Van Horn. He tries to come back with one big punch. Well, round seven finds Gian Franco Rossi still in control. Good right hand by Darren Van Horn here in the eighth round to open things up. Rossi retreating as much as he has uh, throughout the fight, just backing off. In between rounds in Darren Van Horn's corner, his trainer Jesse Reed telling him, you're forgetting he has a body. And he said, I'm not going to kid around. You are losing this fight. You are losing this fight. Trying to instill some urgency in their youngster, Darren Van Horn. Again, the right uppercut by Rossi inside. Clutch, grab, and punch. Boy, Darren has not, does not have much snap on those punches. He's throwing them, but the snap is not there. A good left jab that time by Rossi. And there's Rossi just letting Van Horn punch the body. And there's nothing on those nothing punches on right them at all, Alex. You're right. Oh, and another right uppercut from Rossi. Now, those are scoring punches. I don't think Rossi should stand there and take them. He wants to win every round. And you can't get him away on punches like that. Well, Rossi has to take a round off somewhere, you would think. Oh, and that, I believe, is going to be ruled a split. That's a slip. Darren Van Horn didn't go down from a punch. And Tony Perez wisely making the correct call. This is round eight, Dan, and Darren Van Horn has never knocked out an opponent past round eight. So the pushing and the lack of snap in his punches right now would indicate that if he gets in a situation, he may be in right now, but if he gets in a situation where he has to knock out Ian Franco Rossi to win, he's never been able to do it before. Again, Rossi just leaning in and letting Van Horn hit him to the body, and one can only assume he's doing so because he doesn't respect the blow. Oh, well, that by Rossi, he ducks expecting a comeback. There isn't one, and you see another left snap ahead of Van Horn. Darren's putting out a lot of energy in this round. I think those little flirt. Oh, oh, and that left hurts Van Horn. You saw the head fly back. Well, again, a reminder that Rossi is known as a light hitter, only 15 KOs 
wins in 48 fights. And Van Horn has a stiff chin. And boy, Van Horn is certainly taking his share of shots to the head. Oh, and there's a left lead, and the right scores again by Rossi. If Van Horn is waiting for Rossi to fade, that may be a mistake. And the bell just sounds, and we're getting started here in the ninth round. This is the championship that belongs to Darren Van Horn, but at this pace, not for much longer. Gianfranco Rossi in the lime green trunks, an impressive outing. Alex told you last round about Darren Van Horn never knocking one anyone out beyond this point. Neither is Gianfranco Rossi as we move into the ninth round. If, if our scorecards are correct, Dan, he's not going to have to. All he's going to have to do is survive and not lose any 10-8 rounds. Well, he's doing far more than surviving. He has dominated Darren Van Horn. I have him winning the last three rounds. We're in the ninth round. I have him ahead by four points. I'm sorry, five points with four rounds to go. That touching of gloves. Rossi started an uppercut on the break and, and stopped it and made contact with the chin. They're the father of Darren Van Horn, GL, and he has been around long enough to know what's happening. Now you can see on his face. No Rube there. He's well aware of what's going on. Again, Darren Van Horn scoring to the body. That time with a little bit more zip. No, 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 no. And again, Rossi not tying up his arms on the inside, letting him get those punches off. Right now, Rossi content to do a little clutching and grabbing, and maybe not too bad of a strategy for a 31-year-old man to, to glide a little bit in the ninth round. And also trying to score with that right uppercut on the break. There, the right uppercut again. To recap a little bit for you, it was Rossi in the first round who floored Van Horn right after the fight gets started, and it was no fluke. Van Horn was hurt. Van Horn hung on, fought back, and stayed alive, but I think they're waiting for Rossi to fade, Alex, and it just doesn't seem to be happening. Good uppercut on the break by Rossi. You know, most of the time when a fighter wins a championship, Dan, he improves in ability because he gets that confidence that comes with being a world champion. I belong in the world-class status. In this case, Darren Van Horn may have become overconfident. He was fighting a fighter uh, who had been knocked out five times by Donald Curry when he lost his title, had only two wins since then against non-entities, and really, I think it's fair to assume that Darren Van Horn assumed that Jim Franco Rossi was a shot fighter. Oh, and a good combination. Rossi's strategy here in the ninth is to just hang on, and then on the break of the clinch, throw a barrage. And the last time they broke, he landed three or four good shots. Again, you see him scoring both fighters that time. A good left hand by Rossi appeared to have staggered Van Horn. And here we are at the end of the night. The beginning of the 10th round in a fight scheduled for 12. And we have an upset in the making. Gianfranco Rossi. I mean, I don't see huge. any way he's not ahead on the judges' scorecard. I mean, a huge upset. Oh, yeah. Man. I mean, this of course, is Alex, we're unofficial, but we have him way ahead. I don't know how far out on a limb we'd be going to say that Darren Van Horn has reached that stage of the fight where he needs a knockout to win it, but I certainly think he does. And he's fighting like a man who thinks yeah. he does. They are pushed down. And Rossi's very smart there. He's tired. He's gaining a little time. Now Tony Perez is going to have to wipe both men's gloves. And Jay Franco says, hey, Tony, come over and wipe my gloves. Here they are. Let me get a little time. And he just knocked about 15 seconds off the clock. He also landed two good jabs, trying to keep Van Horn at distance. Darren Van Horn, there's a good right. And he doesn't have much choice but to try to load up a bomb. But he's going to have to be careful. He badly overextended on his follow-through with the last one. And a fighter like Rossi will make him pay. Oh, you saw the unorthodox style of Gian Franco Rossi there. You're talking about throwing a punch from a strange angle. Off balance, falling down to his left, threw a right hand and scored with it. You and can't try to figure this kind of a fighter out. No. You just have to keep throwing punches. You also have to cut the ring off more effectively than Darren Van Horn is doing it. 
when he's on his bicycle like that. Well, Darren Van Horn, whose nickname is the schoolboy, I'm afraid right now is going to school and learning an expensive lesson at the hands of the grizzled old veteran, Gianfranco Rossi. Again, Rossi with the right uppercut on the inside. I thought that right hand that Darren Clutch and Franco with going into that previous clinch right in the temple, I think momentarily got his attention, might have stunned him a little bit, but he clinched long enough to get out of it. And that was Rossi. I thought the Van Horn right hand. What do you think of that last little string of cliches of mine? Pretty good, huh? Excellent thing. Excellent. You can put the book away. <laughs> and there is the girlfriend of Darren Van Horn and Finley. And they have been together. together. They've been together for a while. She's well aware of what's happening. It's desperation time for Darren Van Horn. We're in the tenth round in Atlantic City. And Gian Franco Rossi, who was an outstanding schoolboy soccer player, loves to label himself an all-around athlete and really labels stamina as one of his strong suits. We'll get a chance to display it. We've got a pair of rounds left. Stay with us. Over its life, a motorcraft battery. Yes, Compaq has consistently shown engineering excellence. Ten minutes to spare. That's hardly even. Action in the 11th round. Scheduled for 12. And Darren Van Horn has to feel that title belt flipping down his waist a bit. The corner sounded desperate between rounds. The Rossi corner told you and Franco that Van Horn will be desperate. Right now, Darren looks a little bit too tired. It's taking too much punishment to mount a desperate kind of surge. If you believe, if Gian Franco believes as we do that he is far enough ahead that the opponent needs to knock him out to win, he would be very smart just to stick that jab out, even if he loses the round, just not get caught. Again, a reminder how far Rossi traveled to get this fight. He has never before fought professionally in the United States. Only fought once outside Italy in Cannes, of France, and, you know, a few miles from the Italian border. Only came in here on Monday, had to stay in, in Madrid on a layover when his flight was uh, messed up for two days coming here. Warning by Tony Perez to watch the head. Both fighters have been in tight all day long. It's just that Rossi has been doing the majority of the damage on the break. And during the clinch, for that matter. Oh, again, kind of a glancing blow off the back of the head. Rossi's doing a smart thing here. You always worry when teams go into a pool. Oh, and a couple of good uppercuts, Alex. And you can see the head of Van Horn snap back. I just said you can't go into a prevent defense, even when you think you're far ahead. And he's putting some offense together. Just a remarkable showing by Jim Franco Rossi, Dan. We just can't emphasize enough. I mean, this is a guy who, who quit on his stool against Donald Curry and losing his title after being knocked out five times. He, he left his title in disgrace. He put himself back together physically, put himself back together, most importantly, mentally, and came in here prepared to win this fight. And right now, he is just scoring at will against Darren Van Horn, who has the look of not necessarily a, a hurt fighter, but a thoroughly frustrated fighter. And a beaten fighter. Yes. Moving inside of the final 40 seconds of the 11th round. And right now, Darren Van Horn having to look for a little lightning in a bottle. Oh. Gian Franco Rossi again scoring and hurting Van Horn. Horn just put a little lightning in the left hand. Well, covering well on the inside. We're going to stay between rounds. As we approach the 12th and final round, and I think if you're Darren Van Horn right now, being the schoolboy, you've got to say to yourself, I think I've just met the teacher. Benefit. 
Bennett Rossi. And you heard the bell. The fighters will touch gloves, and here we go, the 12th and final round from Trump Castle in Atlantic City. Darren Van Horn, I don't think there's any question about it, in the blue trunk, needs a knockout to win this fight. That's our unofficial card here in Atlantic City, but anybody that could have him within two points of winning this fight, I'm sorry, I was watching this from Mars. You just saw, I mean, you talk about a huge swing in, in, in the ability of a fighter in a fight. Darren Van Horn, when he won the title in February, in this same ring, if, if the opponent had thrown that kind of a punch at him, stepped back, countered effectively, had hand speed. Right now, he's making his opponent Mitch can't counter, he looks slow, just thoroughly, thoroughly beaten. You wonder whether the inactivity he had since uh, when he had to take the time off because of the hand injury hurt him whether it's ring rust, whether it's overconfidence, or whether it's just simply the fact that Gianfranco Rossi came out in that first round, did something no man had ever done before. He dropped him with a one-two combination, got his respect, and Darren was never able to get back into the fight. I, I think Van Horn, Alex, has been confused by some of Rossi's strategy. He expected Rossi to grab him and hit him. What Rossi was doing was grabbing and clutching, and there is just a good driving open field tackle by Gianfranco Rossi. Gianfranco plays uh, football <laughs> in uh, Italy, yeah. but that's soccer, not football. Yeah, football. That would have been for a three-yard loss. Got into the waist of Van Horden, showed some good leg drive, followed right through. But well, uh, so my point was, rather than clutching and hitting, what he was doing was clutching, and then on the break was where he was scoring. Right. He really hurt Van Horn on the break. Every time, not illegally punching on the break, but in a clinch like this, he'd step back and get punching over his right hand and land that uppercut. Exactly. There he landed the left, right. Oh! oh. And we're inside <laughs> the final minute of the 12th round, and, and you can see Van Horn stunned again. And you can see the look on Gianfranco Rossi's face as he looked over to his corner with a look of victory. He gave him almost a wink. This is my fight. I'm about to become a world champion for the second time. Rossi was the WBC super welterweight champion back in 87 and 88. And now it appears that he's 30 seconds away from being the IBF junior middleweight title. We said at the top, Dan, that Rossi come. Oh! And there is another big blow by Gianfranco Rossi. And that is a knockdown. His gloves hit the floor. His knee did not go yeah. down. Hey. Tony Perez gives the count to Darren Van Horn. And we've got 10 seconds left in this fight. You talk about a punctuation mark. That was it. Unbelievable upset by Gianfranco Rossi of Italy. Unofficially, we think Rossi has won this fight, but only the three judges get the start. We'll be back here to Atlantic City with the decision. Welcome back to Atlantic City. Both fighters are in the ring awaiting the announcement from our ring announcer, Ed Darian, who's still leaning over the ropes. Let's go now up to Ed Darian for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Crystal Ballroom here at the Trump Castle Hotel and Casino by the name in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the scoring by points as follows. Judge Lynn Carter observed the fight 117-109. Judge Frank Burnett, he watched it at 118-108. And Judge Benedetto Montella, he scored it 116-109. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and the brand new Well, clearly, the judges saw it the same way we saw it here at ringside. Darren, Alex Wallow is up in the ring now with Darren Van Horn. What went wrong? I came out when, when I was back in my dressing room. I felt great. But um, I came out here. I was just flat. I sat there was watching what he was doing to me instead of doing going at him. I was just sitting back. I felt from the, from the get-go. I wasn't myself, but I've got to give him all the credit. He took advantage of all my mistakes. He fought a great he fight, did. Darren. It's, t it's easier to win the title than to, than, to, than to keep it. I'm sure he'll be back. Thank you for talking to us. Back to Dan Deardorff at ringside. Okay, thank you very much, Alex, and congratulations to the winner, Gianfranco Rossi. Let's go back to the first round. 
Here we are just 50 seconds into the first round of the fight. And look at the left and then the right from Rossi. And he dominates the fight from that point on. And the judges saw it exactly the same way we did. A unanimous decision for Gian Franco Rossi, the new IBF junior middleweight champion. For Alex Wallow, I'm Dan Deardorff. Thanks for being with us. Now back to New York.